Hello everyone, this is MicroP11 and in this video we are going to talk about the CITLC user interface. In previous videos we have discussed about how to install the CITLC decoder inside the SDR Sharp application, how to identify an Inmar SATC channel and tune into it, how to send the decoded information over UDP to what we have called a listener. In this video we're going to use as a listener the actual user interface for CITLC and this application is called Quick UI. So we're going to talk about where we can get it from, how what is Quick UI, how we can set it up, what information we can expect to uh, see being presented to us. And uh, we will discuss little by little um, as we go through it. The, the repository or the place where you can download this application is the um, open source repository uh, for CITLC. This is the address and I will add it to the below the video once I post it on YouTube. And um, this is the application name, Quick UI. You have seen that, um, you, might, you, you would see that I have already downloaded it. The reason for this is that my internet is extremely slow. So if I would be to download it now, there will be one video about how to download the file from the internet. And I clicked on it and you can see that it's still trying to reach it. And uh, yeah, never mind that. So um, the, next, the, the next step after you, you have downloaded the archive with the application, we will take the application, we will unzip the files contained within and then we're going to copy them on a folder on this computer. Uh, please create a folder. Oh, there you go. I'm going to say cancel. Please create a folder without a space in its name. And because we found that there is a bug in the current version of the application that it just doesn't like spaces in folder names in the path. So let's call it new folder and we're going to call this T1 from test1. And I'm going to put uh, paste the content of that archive in here. And then there are a bunch of files, but the executable that we need is this one, sitelc.quickui.exe. And uh, I'm going to double click on it to open it. And probably the Windows um, smart screen defender pops up. Um, we have discussed about this in a previous video. So we're going to click on more info and then we're going to say run anyway. And then here the application opens. The first thing that we are presented with is a confidentiality notice and this has to do with the fact that the application can receive all the public messages um, and also can receive private messages and hence this notice. And then we're going, I'm going to read it. Messages are intended only for the person or persons named in the message header. Unless otherwise indicated, they contain information that is confidential, privileged and or exempt from disclosure under applicable law. If you have received such message, please delete all copies of the message or the messages. Thank you. And here you would say I understand and agree and then if you don't want this confidentiality notice to show up again you'll just click on this do not show again and you press yes to continue towards the application if you choose no on that dialog the application will close so once the application is open um, let's look a bit of how it is structured um, if you're familiar with uh, the SDR sharp application you see that there is a header here there is a a pane, a setup pane that you can open and close using this button. And this button is to, this is the only action that you need to take, which is to run this application, press on this button to start it and press on this button to stop it. Uh, of course, this now acts like a UDP listener. So all the setup up to this point has to be done in order to receive those messages over the uh, UDP. Now you saw how slow my internet is. And even with that, in this particular instance, I will receive, um, I have a setup 
that um, will send over UDP almost all the channels that are on the AOR West. I think I set up five channels, but um, it's easily to, it's easy to set them all up. And I will make a video of how you can receive all the channels of all the satellites on in Marsat C that you can see from your position on the globe. Uh, that would be a next video. But let's go back to our CITEL um, C user interface. So this is uh, the left pane is the menu. And then let's look a little bit closer to it. The um, the UDP ports field is allows you to add as many ports as you want, and they should be comma delimited. So you can do one five zero zero three, one five zero zero four. It's up to you. Currently, I am sending all the messages that are coming from AOR west over this port 15003 i'll just leave 15004 here just to see that the application runs but you can have one satellite coming on the port for example one satellite coming on another port and i do not know if you can see three sats uh, at your position you might be able to but i'm not sure uh, you can of course receive uh, information over a spy server network in which case you can set up all the four satellites and uh, have the quick UI displaying all that information amalgamated. The, the next part is settings. And then here we have packet lines. And this refers to how many packets we're going to display in this window. Um, as you remember, we are sending over UDP frames. Each frame contains a number of packets and to make this user interface less sluggish when there are tons and tons of packets coming, we can restrict the number of lines that show up in this window to 100. And then the same applies to the debug window. And then the same applies to the database itself. So DB hours means that um, we any information that is older than 36 hours will be removed from the database just to keep it running at a decent uh, rate. One thing that is worth mentioning is that uh, the database that this application runs on is installed the moment you start the application. And then I will show you that there is a folder here, um, C test. I'm interesting, I don't see it yet. So we'll see maybe when it starts receiving information, it will be created. And then, um, all the information gets saved into that database, which means that, uh, I mean, I'm letting you know that there's a bunch of more information in that database than what we are displaying in the user interface. So if you're so inclined, you can use a viewer for the information in that database and then go and then uh, have a day, have a field day, um, seeing how much extra information is. And I will, add a link to the database viewer to this uh, video. Uh, let's go a bit lower. Um, there are two checkboxes here. One is a save packets to database. So if we check this checkbox, every packet that we receive, it's getting stored into the database. So if you're interested, into debugging, into using that information to try to decode more packets. And we'll talk about, we will talk about that a bit later. Feel free to use this checkbox. Otherwise, you will just add a lot of information into your database, that information that you don't really need. Also, you can click this checkbox to save received frames to file. And I'm just gonna do it uh, for now. I'll, I'll check everything that there is here just to have fun. But the save receive frames to file means that anytime we, we get a message that we can read, that message will also be found on a file in the system. And I will show you where all those files get created. And then this checkbox here is to apply a dark theme to the quick UI. And this is the dark theme. Now, 
um, these things are coming from Windows. This application is written in an old, um, how, what is the name for it? Um, oh, I don't remember. But in an old, let's call it library, that these controls have um, this not so nice things that you cannot control the color for. However, still, um, you can maybe remove the uh, the menu and then um, you can play with the colors here. You could play with these numbers to change the color of the, uh, let's say here, instead of 90s, I put, uh, this is the text color. So maybe we put here uh, 200 and just see what happens. So there you go, the text color changed a bit. Um, another field here is the chart darkening. And this has to do with when we see a chart at night, we want to darken the, uh, the chart just so it will be easier on our eyes. There is a checkbox here, interesting, that I can only see it now. I forgot to um, add it so it can be seen. Never mind. Let me remove the, the dark theme. And then there's a checkbox here for raw. So we can log any message that we receive um, to a, okay, I have made a mistake here. When I set save receive frames to file, this is actually the frames you're receiving in a hexadecimal format. And those are the ones that we can save to file. Here, we are logging the actual messages that we decode, and then we can also log them as clear text decoded, and also we can log them as raw in binary format for um, files that are binary, and let's like, say pictures or um, different encoding schemas that we are not decoding. So let me set up a folder. I'm gonna call it on this PC, and I'm gonna go inside T1. I'm gonna make new folder called messages. Say okay. And um, you see that they start showing up here. The actual database, I still don't see the database file yet. Um, we'll continue the explanation. Um, the, next, the next part is the packet decoding part. Um, now here are their checkboxes. And you can set which parts you want to decode and which parts you don't want to decode. There are a few packets that are not decoded yet um, and those you cannot check them so uh, feel free to write a decoder for them if you want um, as i mentioned there's a lot more information there that uh, there that there's displayed in the ui and there's a lot more information that we receive and it is not decoded um, a lot of if all of the, that information contains things that maybe you should not see unless you really want to look into them. So here are just a few packets that will allow us to see parts of the information that is not on that in Marsat C um, network. And then we're going to move to this part, uh, which is the main um, application window. And then we see here there are four tabs. This is an info tab. Um, you have a bit of history about the site LC. This, these are the packets that we're going to see when we receive this. These are debug messages. Now, one thing to uh, keep in mind is that this application was created for um, debug purposes. And I see I'm running out of time here. It is uh, 14 minutes into this video. My recorder only goes 15 minutes, my free recorder. So I'm going to pause it here and then continue in another video. And I will add them all together as part of part three. So I'm going to stop this.